For years, one of your colleagues who was an admitted child molester sat in this chamber. No expulsion. One member sits in this chamber who was found guilty of domestic violence. No expulsion. We had a member pee in another member's chair in this chamber. No expulsion. In fact, they're in leadership. What you're saying to us, since you're trying to put us on trial, I'll say what you're really putting on trial is the state of Tennessee. What you're really showing for the world is holding up a mirror to a state that is going back to some dark, dark roots. Yep, and look, there's obviously a lot of places in America that have some really, really dark roots that you don't have to go that far back to find. But um, Tennessee is definitely historically one of those places. This is completely unacceptable to a modern audience that likes democracy. But in the context of Tennessee, I mean, I feel like this fits in pretty well with some of how their politics has gone over the last couple of centuries. Um, I would add to it, I understand it's Congress versus the state legislature, but like um, George Santos is still a congressman. He will be until he's eventually beaten in a primary. Uh, when Marjorie Green was outed as like liking posts about a bullet in Nancy Pelosi's head and all of that, they were censured, still serving, they're still in Congress. They spoke through a bullhorn and so they have to be out. I don't know, I, I look. I am hoping that there will be a big reaction at the end of this block. We're gonna be talking a little bit about where we go from here. But I mean, the, the Republicans think that they nailed this thing. Um, and, and I hope that it's eventually proven that they were wrong. Um, can we go back to the guy who peed in someone else's chair? How is that? Yeah, I would like more details on that. Like that's intri- that's that's along the lines of bullhorn. Like if you're kicking people out for bullhorn in decorum, as they say, in the house of rep or you know in the in the Tennessee state legislature i think the p thing i think that would be there i think that would be in line but well, if you're so so ideally what they would do is they say well they're trying to go behind this argument that it's all about procedure and decorum rules this is not a partisan situation this doesn't have to do with the fact that you guys are advocating to keep children safe by passing common sense gun legislation that is itself wildly popular. Talk about triggered, they're triggered not by the murders of children, but by the idea that everyone's pointing out the obvious. Mm -hmm. The obvious, which is, yeah, we should probably make it harder for folks to get a gun and go kill kids like this, period. Yeah, I and it's a great like, opportunity because it was a trans person who did it. You'd think the Republicans would be, you know, up in arms, so to speak, over that. Nope, still, still nothing because that gun lobby money is so damn sweet. Yeah, I. It, it's just weird to be in a position where the only takeaway I can come to, I guess, is if Justin Jones and Justin Pearson had walked onto the legislature floor with bullhorns. And had pulled down their pants and peed into the bullhorns, they'd still be representatives. But because they spoke through them, they are not. And the Republicans are the ones who venerate free speech. They don't like canceling people for what they say or do. Um, and what a ridiculous just, fiction. Just to make a point, I don't want to blow anyone's mind here, but if we can go to graphic 10. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bust of Nathan Bedford Forrest. I think, we, yeah, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Uh, this is the, and if we go on to more information about Forrest's notoriety only increased when in 1867, he became the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, a secret hate organization that employed terror of pursuit in its white supremacist agenda. Why am I bringing up Nathan Bedford Forrest bust? Because those legislators would have had to walk past it in the Nashville State Capitol on their way to go make a statement about gun violence in America. It's amazing. Until when? How long was this in the State House? The first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan? It was removed, according to this headline, in 2021. Bust of the Klan leader is removed from Tennessee. It's It was in the Nashville State Capitol House. 
where they would walk by if every anyone is denying the legacy of racism in the mm-hmm. Tennessee Tennessee state legislature that legacy was literally on full display in a two and a half foot bust on a platform that was self two and a half feet a five foot tall statue of the grand wizard of the KKK. So your idea of oh this is just a decorum ground rules violation here no. 100% provable that only with our pressure that you should probably get rid of the grand wizard of the KKK. Finally, there's the 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 ocular proof of racism yeah. has been removed from the state house. Maybe they just want to make sure that everybody remembers that Tennessee is where the KKK began. Um, they don't want anyone to learn from that. They just maybe want to remind them of it. Maybe it's a point of pride, I don't know. It certainly acts like that's what they think. If the bust sticks around until I'm gonna say after the launch of the third season of Stranger Things, I kind of feel like you probably could have gotten rid of it a couple of years earlier.